Urzin chance on the reaction this is indestructible indestructible oh there you go marine earns medal of honor at 17 years old what at 17 so you're not allowed to drink beer well they're like okay you can have medal of honor how, how does that make sense right not the medal of honor part but beer thing i mean this would be exceptions right like i just killed a ton of people and saved a lot of lives i have a medal of honor you're not gonna let me drink a beer that's insane jack lucas this is much of fatrician obviously as you've seen title already at this rate fatrician is gonna run out of like badass stories he should like have some badass stories and then talking about like like he used to like equipment and like some other thing but then he created fat files for that right i don't know but if you just like make a badass like how many badass stories are all out there or maybe i'm wrong there's like too many of them he'll never run out i guess fatrician is the window to the like real real world which looks like hollywood but it's real at least to me that's what it is because i've never come across any guy i mean yeah there, there was some channels like what is that uh, mad lads mad lads there's a channel right count dankula or something right yeah there's a channel who talked about ridiculous stories but somehow that's a bit different than how fat Jason stories are fat Jason stories are like oh by the way this was the guy you know american mil basically military marine navy whatever right and by the way he did this and did this like what the hell that 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 sounds like even insane than what tom cruise does in like some mission impossible type of shit like i say that all the time like why is hollywood not using this why do they need to like nowadays like you know uh, hollywood plays safe all the time either they recreate old movies or just like <clears throat> superhero shit again recreating comics because they don't want to take a risk you don't need to think about stories they look the shit like this right here just make it how hard is that i don't know I guess intellectual prop property element they can't own these stories and shit like that so they are basic i think that's what that's what's gonna be right i'm pretty sure that's the case they don't make this because they can't really own it they can make a movie about it but they can't own merchandise and all that shit because it's somebody else's story i don't know what else always one Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. I like stories like this. There's only two channels I know of, Fatrician and like, like I said, Count Dankula. If you know of any other channels like this, definitely comment down because this is why I started this channel in the first place. Right? I like to watch this video. I'm a lazy guy, I guess. I don't know. I'm not lazy. I don't know. Lazy in that way, right? Where I probably sure I would, you know, I, I want to watch this, I want to watch this and would, would have never watched it, right? But because of the channel, I can right because it's like incentive let's make a video so let's watch it right so you know this is like this is why i started like first history video which is basically this is history right so if you know other channel which uh, has this you know real badass stories like that who tells like that definitely comment down and let's watch it i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know if this is the luckiest man of all time or the unluckiest man of all time but one thing's for sure he just might be the toughest Today we're talking about America's indestructible Marine Jack Lucas. He served three years. Tough est. He just said tough est. So of all the badass stories he talked about, this guy's gonna be more insane than all of that. Was in the United States Marine Corps, six months of which was inside of a prison cell. He stormed the beach at Iwo Jima. He survived jumping on top of two live grenades. He earned the Medal of Honor and he did all of it before his first day of high school, which is really just the beginning of the story. But before we get to all that, let's get this sponsorship out of the way. This video is brought to you by Sundays, food for dogs. It's fancy food for dogs. Okay, look, long story short, there was a veterinarian that was mad that all the fancy expensive dog food also needed to be stored inside the refrigerator, which is- Okay, I don't have a dog animals in general. I don't know, because I'm a germophobe or some shit. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure like nowadays, like when, if you are dogs and like, I'm pretty sure like they want your food, right? What you're eating, like whatever you would bring on uh, chicken or whatever, right? Meat or whatever you're eating. Dogs usually want that rather than dog foods. So do, do you feed your dog dog food or you just feed all of that thing? Like, I don't know. Lame because the refrigerator is for people food. So they went, they created the company Sunday's Food for Dogs and it's high quality food that's been air dried. Essentially, it's jerky for dogs. So it's high quality and it doesn't need to be kept in your fridge. I mean, look at it. It even looks like jerky. Okay, to give you an idea of how healthy this food is, I'm gonna go ahead and read the ingredients right off the bag for you. We've got cornmeal, ferrous sulfate, niacin, thiamine monotrate, riboflavin, vegetable oil. Wait, no, 
That's the shit I put in my body. Uh, the dog noise. food ingredients are as follows. We've got turkey, turkey heart, turkey liver, egg yolk, millet, pumpkin, kale, ground bone, fish oil, salt, parsley. You get the idea. It's really healthy. Which is a good thing because my dog- What's with the niacin and niacinamide that people nowadays post a lot? Oh, this has niacinamide. Like people, ooh, I wanna- Is that the new- magic word now is just vitamin like b3 b3 yeah b3 it's just vitamin b3 i mean it's important right it, it really boosts your energy like i felt it not with niacinamide because it's like a precursor pure niacin right if you take it like 30 40 mg at once yeah it will give you insane boost i can feel that right more than that it will just basically give you like what is it called red, red skin itching and all that so don't do that but it's not some magic food if you eat like decent enough diet like you're probably not gonna need that He's a pretty picky eater, okay? He likes the finer things in life, like fancy dog food, eating snakes in my backyard, licking his own ass, okay? He's got a very refined palate. It's super important that I get him good food, but not so important that I'm willing to put it inside of my fridge, and that's where Sundays comes in, and the best part is they deliver it right to your door, so if you want to check him out, I'm gonna have a link and a discount code down below. Let's get back to the video. All right, Jacqueline Harold Lucas, born on February 14th, 1928 in Plymouth, North Carolina. It is the same exact story I've told time and time again. These guys all had the same childhood. He grew up during the Great Depression. He really liked boxing. He got in a ton of trouble and got in a lot of fights. When he was eight years old, his uncle gifted him a Marine Corps dress uniform hat, and he absolutely loved it. He wore the thing to school every day for months, and from that moment on, he always wanted to be a Marine. Fast forward to when he was 11, his dad would pass away from cancer, and Jack, understand Understandably so, didn't take it that well and started getting in even more trouble and more fights. By the time he was 13, his mother, who was still in her mid-30s, was trying to find a new husband, and every time she would bring a guy home, the young 13-year-old Jack, who was a pretty big kid for his age and pretty skilled at boxing, would threaten to beat the shit out of him. I'm 10 years old, but I'll beat your ass. That, combined with all the other trouble and fights that he was already getting into, his mother had no choice but to send him off to military school. It is there at the Edwards Military Institute that Jack and all the other cadets would gather around the radio to hear the news broadcast that the Japanese had attacked Pearl Harbor. Jack described this moment as the end of his childhood and from this moment on it became his sole ambition in life to go fight the Japanese to avenge Pearl Harbor. The only problem is, is he's 13 and you gotta be 17 to join the United States Marine Corps, so he did the only thing he could do. He finished out classes, graduated the eighth grade, and went back home for summer. He gets home, mom doesn't just have a new boyfriend, mom has a new husband. It is a used car salesman and alcoholic by the name of Radford Jones, and it is very clear to the young Jack Lucas that this man has married his mother for the insurance money that they got from his father passing, and he is already doing his damn damnedest to burn his way through it. So obviously Jack is not a big fan of this guy and threatens to beat the shit out of him multiple times, which is actually a threat that carries some weight because now at 14, he is 5'8", 180 pounds and pretty good at boxing. So obviously the home life situation is pretty tense. The one redeeming quality of Radford Jones is that he had two sons that he brought into the marriage. So Jack now had two stepbrothers. And over the course of that summer, he truly came to think of them as his brothers. And then the oldest brother, Billy, would go off and join the Navy. By this point in time, some mm, interesting i thought that would go other way i'm glad it didn't because he, he you know we, you know like approving of the stepfather now his two kids like i thought there was gonna be friction there but i'm glad it's not right at least something's wholesome Summer's coming to an end. He's getting ready to go back to military school and he dreads the idea. He doesn't want to go to military school. He wants to go to the military. He wants to be a Marine and he wants to fight the Japanese to avenge Pearl Harbor. So he decides that's exactly what he's going to do. He goes to the Marine Corps recruiter, lies, says he's 17 years old, gets the parental permission slip to take back home to have his mom sign it. Mom obviously refuses to sign it. He needs to go back to school, not go fight in World War II. So Jack promises his mom, hey, give me your blessing to go do this. And I promise you, as soon as I get back, I'll finish school at which point his mom is like okay fine you have my blessing but I'm not gonna lie for you this permission slip says you need to be 17 years old and you're 14 if you wait till you're 17 I will sign and give you my blessing to go off to war no what are you waiting for do it yes you can for Jack, this wasn't good enough, so he forges her signature right in front of her and then tells stepdad Radford Jones to hop in the car and give him a ride. Hold up there, like, can 14 year old look like 17? I'm trying to imagine, like, I don't even, like, who's 14? I know, like, I don't know. I don't know, how, how was I looking when I was 14? Can you look 17? I mean, maybe, right? It depends. I mean, like he says, it's already like 5'8", 180, but isn't that like some 
sign that just should, facial signs and things like you're just young. I'm pretty sure face is one of the things that doesn't grow that fast. But I'm pretty sure face doesn't grow that much until you're like 18 and 20 anywhere, right? Pretty sure, uh, you know, when you reach like 21, 22, 23, you're like your face start to mature really faster, right? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. So I don't know, maybe you can mimic a 17 year old, I don't know ride to the recruiter's office. They get there, Jack goes in, hands over the parental consent form to the Marine Corps recruiter, and the Marine Corps recruiter's like, great, where's your birth certificate? And Jack is like, huh, what? And the Marine Corps recruiter is like, yeah, we need your birth certificate too, okay? Important context here, there was a ton of people that lied about their age. Come here, come here, what, what do you, is, is, that, is that anything written here? <laughs> what do I look like? <laughs> give me my birth certificate, give me the birth certificate, where is it? Age and got into the military way before they should have in the army and the navy, but for some reason the Marine Corps during World War II demanded birth certificates and verified your age to a degree that most other branches simply yes, didn't. Marines. I have read multiple accounts of this and I have even personally been told by a World War II Marine that was at Mount Sarabachi when they raised the flag at Iwo Jima that if you wanted to be a Marine, you had to be 17. It's what can you do for you, young man? I said, I want to sign up. He said, how old are you? I said, 16. He says, I can't take you. You got to be 17. He said, when you get to be 17, come back and see me and we can do business. So he could just walk right next door and try to join the army or the navy and probably get away with it, but he's always wanted to be a marine since he was eight years old. So he walks back out to the car, Radford's still sitting in it, head hanging low, he's absolutely devastated. At which point, Radford Jones, fucking stepdad of the year, is like, what? I thought I got rid of you, why are you back? Jack tells him it's not gonna work because he has to have his birth certificate to prove that he's 17 years old, otherwise the Marine Corps isn't gonna take him. So Radford Jones marches right back into the recruiter's office and goes full car salesman mode. Walks right up to the Marine recruiter and is like, hey, I'm his stepdad, the kid's definitely 17. His mom actually lost his birth certificate in a house fire. Actually, now that I think of it, I don't even think he ever had a birth certificate, you know, because it's the early 1940s and all kinds of people were still born at home. The government doesn't even know that this kid still exists, okay? Don't believe me we could cut one of his arms off right now and count the rings i guarantee you there's 17 of them i think you ought to buy it today right now you want to know why because this buick is you the color is you look at it this is your car at this point the recruiter's like i mean all right fine whatever hands jack a clipboard with a piece of paper it makes sense like recruiters like I, I, I can't deal with this shit i think that was like one of the as soon as like it went beyond certain threshold it's like wh why am i getting annoyed right now okay fine right he doesn't have to be great salesman he just have to annoy him just just enough Right, he's like, yeah, okay, fine, it makes sense, there you go. And he's like big ifs already, so he's like, okay, nobody's gonna doubt me, even if uh, he's not, you know, like 17. Nobody's gonna say like, oh, why did you do that? Like, oh, look at that, he's 5'8 and shit. Paper, fill this out, sign your name at the bottom. Jack does it, signs his name, turns around to, you know, begrudgingly thank stepdad for helping him out. Stepdad's already gone. Car's not even in the parking lot. Dude bounced. Cool, that doesn't matter. He got what he wanted. He is officially enlisted at the age of 14 on August 6th, 1942. He immediately gets sent off to basic training and he absolutely crushes it, gets put in a leadership role pretty much the entire time because he's the only one there with military experience because he spent the last year at a military academy. So he already knew most of the jargon, the ranks, how to march and so on. So he was one of the most high speed privates there. Besides that, nothing of note really happens while he's at basic training, except he did say he learned one very important lesson. One day, one of the drill instructors while they were out at the firing line said, who wants to drive a truck? And Jack, being a 14 year old who didn't have much driving experience was actually kind of excited to drive a truck so he raised his hand and volunteered if you are 14, any driving is just like, oh, just exciting. It's like, oh, I have to do this type of way. I mean, everybody, everybody remembers like when you were like, you know, early teens and mid teens, it's like, I have to drive a car because that's one thing that you want to do, right? Even I remember that. So, yeah, 14 year old in military, military truck, of course, you're going to do that volunteered at which point the drill instructor gave him an empty wheelbarrow told him to go over there fill it up full of ammunition and haul ammunition up and down the firing line all day long it is at this point that he learned to never volunteer for anything in the military ever again after graduating basic training he gets sent to jacksonville naval air base where he basically gets to be a gate guard and do some more training now he's outside of basic training this is more advanced training and when you go to these more advanced training courses typically you're allowed to have liberty leave over the weekend you're allowed to go out into town and drink and 
mingle with the civilians. I'm going to say that again, but slower. The 14 year old Marine that nobody realizes is 14, including all the other Marines, the bartenders and all the women at the bar is going to go drinking at the bar with the Marines every weekend. I'll let your imagination. But is it supposed to be 17? Like, can you drink at 17 around that time? And I'm 17, still underage, so whatever problem would have been there, it's like, I guess people, you know, like, people are not going to worry about all this shit when they think they're going to die because World War II is going on shit, I don't know. Or maybe, like, nobody thought of, I don't know, I, I don't want to say anything and imagine anything more than that, but I don't know. He's still supposed to be underage because 17 is, last I checked, still underage. I shouldn't tell you what happens. No, man, I love you. Oh. So he finishes up training in Jacksonville. By June of 1943, he is sent back to North Carolina to Camp Geiger, where he's going to have a bunch of machine gun training, and he is absolutely excellent at running that machine gun. He does such a good job, in fact, that after finishing the machine gun training, he is one of nine Marines selected to stay at Camp Geiger and become an instructor. Kate, to most people, that's a good thing. But Jack is absolutely furious because he doesn't want to be a machine gun trainer in North Carolina. As soon as he said that, I'm like, oh, the fuck? He's like, he wanted to... He want to see some accent, not train people. He wants to go to the Pacific Theater and fight the Japanese. Now, he finds out that he's going to be a machine gun trainer via letter, right? He is given orders on paper. He doesn't share those orders with anybody. All the other Marines were given orders at roughly the same time of what unit they're getting shipped out to and what unit they're going to be a part of. So Jack just doesn't tell anybody anything and he waits when the time comes that all the other marines are loading up onto a train to go all the way from north carolina to california on their way to the pacific theater jack says fuck it and he jumps on the train too he figures it's better. isn't that dangerous literally disobeying orders like somebody found out like you you had the orders and you didn't listen isn't that like court martial level shit like that would ruin everything but then again back then it's not like today's world right like Things disappear all the time. Like, I didn't get the message. What you talking about? He just basically burned the letter. Like, maybe they misplaced it. Who knows? Better to ask forgiveness and permission. What's the worst that could happen? They ship him back and he has to be a machine gun trainer anyways. He spends 30 days in the brig. Whatever. Best case scenario, he gets attached to a different unit and he gets to go into combat. So he's on the train for a couple of days. They make it to California. Everybody gets off the train. They form up. There's an NCO there with a clipboard and he reads off all the names on the roster. After he finishes reading all the names on the roster, he says, is there anybody that I didn't call? Jack raises his hand. NCO's like, why aren't you on the roster to which jack geniusly plays the stupid private role and just goes i don't know i was just told you get on the train keeping track of everything was the army's job i'm i'm just here to which the sergeant is like that's exactly correct and is totally something that would happen okay um you come with me they go to the commanding officer's office they walk in the lieutenant is like what do you want the sergeant Sign is like it. this private's not on the roster to which the lieutenant goes so put him on the roster. Okay, boom. Mission successful. Jack may be the only person ever. <laughs> uh, okay, not roster. Okay, right name here. Sign here. There you go. Done. Job done. Before anybody knows anything, like, few years have been passed. To go AWOL so that he could go to war. So they notify Camp Geiger back uh, in North that Carolina that Jack Lucas is here now and we're not sending him back. So now... Isn't the technical definition of AWOL just, like, missing? Right? Like... If you run away, like, miss from your duty, you're still in military. You're still serving in a way. Technical error, why not? Now he is at Camp Elliott in California. And Camp Elliott is, I mean, they're training, but it's basically just they're there for a couple of months or a couple of weeks while they're getting moved closer and closer to the Pacific Theater to go into combat. So during the day, they're doing stuff, you know, they're like moving supplies, administrative bullshit, but every night they're going out, they're getting hammered, going out on the town. This might be their last chance some of them ever have to have a good time, so that's exactly what they're doing. And Jack, you gotta remember, he's still 14. He's feeling kind of self-conscious. He's got a bunch of other 17, 18, 19, 20 plus year old Marines talking and bragging about all the women they're sleeping with and how much they're drinking and all the crazy stuff they've done. So in a desperate attempt to look cool, he reaches into his bag and he pulls out his 38 caliber revolver, actually his mom's 38 caliber revolver that he took with him. And he's just sitting on his bunk, twirling it on his finger. It was fucking loaded and he fires off around through a couple of tents. Luckily, nobody was hurt, but Jack is like, all right, well, Time to mail that back home. So he mails that back home to his mom. Shut up, what the fuck are you doing, man? Where did you get that shit? 
my mod. So be cool with a gun. Mission failed completely. What else can we do to look cool? I know. Wait a minute. Again, wouldn't that cause issues? Where'd you got the gun? Like, I don't know. It's a civilian gun. I got it from my mom. Isn't that issue? Like, why the fuck you are that in military camp? Isn't there everything that's supposed to be is from there or something? Like weapons and everything? Where'd you get the 38? Wouldn't that be like, nobody asks questions, like where'd you get the 38? What does any military service member, regardless of branch, do immediately upon graduating training? They go out and they get a tattoo. Okay, sidebar. Yes, I realize that I'm covered in tattoos and there's like five guns on the couch behind me and I'm basically making fun of myself at this point, okay? I get it. Anyways, the real question here is what is this young 14-year-old Marine gonna get for his very first and probably his only tattoo? Well, obviously, we're gonna go with the Marine Corps Globe and Anchor, right? It's iconic. Every Marine's got a tattoo of it. That's what we're getting. But Jack opts for a little bit of a different version and he replaces the globe with the head of a bulldog. So now that he's cool enough, he's going out every night, he's drinking with the Marines, Basically, basically he's becoming protagonist of a video game, right? You play any of those video games, right? Like, what is that game? Like, Metal Gear, Solid 5, Phantom, whatever, right? In that, like, you can change your logo to something like Double Diamond or whatever the fuck name was. Make your own insignia, why the fuck not? He, he's becoming, like, different, different protagonist. There you go. I'm the one who's gonna be kicking ass, right? Like, the, you know, last video from Fatris on whether Feather, right? White Feather, that's how they knew him. That's the sniper. He's partying before they get shipped off to war. And this is where things start to go a little sideways. He starts getting into a little bit of trouble. One day, they're at this outdoor bar. He's wearing his garrison cap, also known as a piss cutter. And he's talking to a group of women with his friend group. And then some other group of Marines comes up. And the biggest guy there picks on him because he's the shortest. He's 5'8", but he's 180 pounds. He's stocky. He's a boxer. He's not the first, I think he's 15 at this point. He's not the first 15-year-old that you'd want to mess with. So this older Marine, attempting to punk him, walks up to him, grabs a hat off the top of his head and turns it sideways and says hey you look like napoleon at which point jack immediately knocks this dude out cold so he gets into a little bit of trouble for that then the weekend comes around and one of the marines has a brilliant idea hey we're in california we should go to tijuana so now the 15 year old marine is going to party with all the other marines in in tijuana which once again i'm just gonna have to let you imagine how that goes well, we got the infamous Vogel. Get your head. Wait for me, Nicola. Wait for me on the outside. We're going to go to Hawaii. And this is pretty much the new norm until November of 1943, when the entire unit gets sent out to Hawaii. And while they're there, there's not much time to goof off. Things are moving quick. His unit finds out that they are going to be invading this island called Tarawa, and apparently it's going to be a big deal. So Jake takes his time to write potentially his final letters home, sends those off, and then helps keep getting ready to go off to war. The day finally comes. They're going to load up on the boats and get ready to take off. Jack is pumped. He's finally getting to go off to war. This is exactly what he's been wanting for years at this point. So they're forming up by the ramp of the boat. They got a guy there with the roster. As soon as he calls your name, you say here, and then you go and you get on the boat, okay? They called Jack Lucas, and they say fall out to the Colonel so-and-so's office. Oh, shit. Okay, at this point, Jack's shitting bricks. He has no idea what's going on. He goes into Jack the Colonel's caught. office. The Colonel sits him down and is like, look, son, you know we screen the mail when you send it out of the base, right? To make sure you're not telling anybody anything they're not supposed to know. And the Jack's like, I, I didn't know that. And then it dawns on him. He mentioned in one of his letters that he was 15 years old and now the core knows the truth the colonel informs Whoa. jack that he is doing the paperwork to get him separated and chaptered out of the united states marine corps at which point jack tells look here's the thing if you're in military and if the whole military thing is like if you if you go to your home you don't have freedom to basically run to your home because you're on duty just just think, you know, all your civilian rights that you think might not apply to you like that, right? So, like, uh, your right to privacy and shit is not going to apply there, right? So, yeah, you're male and think people are going to read that. When you send and receive for many reasons, security or whatever. Because at the time you're doing duty, you're, 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 you're uh, how to say this, like, you're protecting civilians, right? That is your job. You're basic, every, time, every time you're there, you're on duty 24-7. There is no off time, right? Even when you sleep, like you're on duty because you're in the camp. So a lot of your freedoms might get sacrificed. People don't think of that. People still have like that civilian kind of mentality. Like, why would they check my mail? They can't do that. No, they probably can because you're on military right now, right? It's not the same as being home or being on the leave or something. 
it's a colonel. If you do that, I'm just going to go to the army and they're not going to check and they're not going to care. This stops the colonel in his tracks and he stops filling out the paperwork and he's thinking about what to do. And it dawns on him the best thing he can do to help this reckless kid is to keep him here as a Marine where he can keep an eye on him. So that's what the Colonel does. He ends that's up making badass. Jack the garbage truck driver on the base. So Jack is absolutely furious. All of his buddies are going off to war and now he's a garbage man. So one day Jack's driving the garbage truck. He's got to pull over, get some gas. So he pulls over at this gas station slash automotive repair shop and he's looking around and there's like this little impound lot. And in this little impound lot sitting up on some blocks is this badass 1935 black Auburn convertible. And he ends up asking the gas station attendant like, hey, what's up with this cool ass sports car? And the attendant is like, oh, some millionaire abandoned it after they attacked Pearl Harbor. It's just been sitting there. If you want it, we'll sell it to you for like 150 50 bucks. So Jack gets two of his buddies. They pool their money together. They buy this 1935 Auburn. 150 back then would have been like a few thousand, right? Like it's not the, not the same as like hundreds of thousands that car should have cost in today's money type of way. But yeah, thousands like, yeah, that's something. But even then like they have to like pull together money and shit. God, what you gonna do with the car, man? You, you like a military camp. Can they let you keep it? Like, I don't know convertible problem it has no rims and no tires however he's going to strategically acquire some from the army okay gets those put on fixes the canvas convertible part with some canvas that he also tactically acquires from the army so now he's got a car but here's the problem he's 15 he doesn't have a driver's license and the car's not registered because it's it's basically stolen but here's the upside this is a really fancy car and not only is this a really fancy car just by normal car standards this is a really fancy car and it's in hawaii in the 1940s meaning nobody else has a car like this in hawaii and whoever paid the money to have this imported to hawaii spent a ton of money to do it so nobody has the balls to pull this car over because whenever they see some young private driving this thing they just automatically assume oh that's got to be like the personal attendant to some general or something and he's driving the general's car on very official business i'm not gonna fuck with him so now jack and his two buddies same shit as that Viet vietnam uh, yeah vietnam video right where like where they just went with an you know like blacked out limo suv and just like walk straight through like nobody's gonna stop them it's blacked out limo suv that story that, that that's an insane story similar to that like yeah that is so true like if you if you have this kind of like badass a lot of psychology works there right uh, prejudging things is basically human nature, right? Prejudice is basically human nature. It doesn't matter how badly you try to remove it, it's never gonna be removed, right? So, in out of everything, it works like that, right? Uh, that's the first process your brain makes it. So, as soon as you see that car, somebody driving it, you're not gonna try to fuck with that. that that's it. The end. Couple of Marines have a car that they're never gonna get pulled over in cruising around Hawaii. It is at this point that things start to go sideways. Jack is not handling the fact that all of his buddies went off to war without him very well. And every time he gets leave, Liberty, he goes out, he gets drunk and he ends up getting in a fight. He goes on 17 Liberties. He gets in 17 fights. He gets arrested 17 times. And on the 18th Liberty, he gets in an 18th fight. And this fight is with some six foot three pretty boy Marine that they're putting on all the posters and the billboards for recruiting. And Jack ends up beating the shit out of this dude and messing up his pretty face at which point he gets thrown in the brig and he's awaiting trial by a military court for 45 days they drag him outside okay he's like five eight five nine probably even if you grew a bit and he beat the shit out six foot three that's a that's a big deal right someone like i don't know like triple h or brock lesnar is six foot three that's like big number so five foot eight five foot nine that's badass right there that's like an achievement and make him break rocks all day long. After 45 days of that, he finally gets his court date and his official punishment is time served plus 30 days of bread and water. Bread and water is a Navy punishment that's been around pretty much since the- The fuck? Confinement on bread and water was one of the Navy's hardest non judicial punishment was actually qualified as an option to use an ETH free ranks below for misdemeanor. So you only get bread and water? How is that a punishment? Isn't that like a, a anything that fucks up with your like uh, you know biology at all? Isn't that a like 
bread is not everything like bread doesn't have all the vitamins and things i guess back then nobody knew knew that it's like it's food who cares right you're not gonna get luxury that's what they're thinking but now today is like that would be cruel because like you're you're literally taking nutrients from a person like that's like okay like you can't think of any other type of like that type of way right i don't know i don't know how to explain that like actually like imagine if somebody you like i don't know why i'm having a hard time remembering words but Imagine if if somebody punish somebody, but just like you know, like basically taken away a lot of like salt and nutrient, a lot of things that your body need. That's torture, basically, isn't that? But back then, nobody knew that. The inception of the country, and they didn't get rid of it until 2019. What it originally was back in the day was basically solitary confinement, except for your meals, you get two slices of bread and one glass of water. And then in 1909, they decided that 30 days, which was the maximum sentence, was too much, and they reduced it down. Hold up, the 2019, that's insanity. Like, that's way too late. By then, they knew, like, okay, bread alone cannot, I mean... If you're trying to survive, sure you can survive on bread, like, but that's not, that's not good, that could fuck you up in many other ways, right? Some of the ways the science doesn't even know yet because we haven't studied yet, right? Uh, literally taking away micronutrients is, is problematic, right? People with, uh, you know, nutrient deficiency has a lot of problems like anemia and God knows what, right? They have to be pumped with vitamin B12s and shit, right? Ions and shit. Uh, th that's that's problematic so uh, bread and water that's problem all the way to 2019 that's i don't know down to a maximum of seven days on bread and water that was allowed now this is the 1940s that's later than 1909 how on earth did jack just get sentenced to 30 days of bread and water well the workaround if you really upset somebody is they'll still sentence you to 30 days but once a week you'll get one normal meal and like an hour outside of your cell that way it resets the clock on your seven day punishment because you just can't go 30 days unbroken without a normal meal. So they give you one meal to reset the clock. So that sucks, but he gets through it. By the time he gets out, it's May, 1944. Meeks back up with his buddies. They still got the car. I mean, again, thinking of the vitamins, like fat solubles, you shouldn't have issues because every week, sure you can like load up on that. If you get a meal every week, right? You can get a load up on like fat solubles, but still like vitamin B12s and all the B vitamins might be an issue because those are water solubles. You need that every day. Everything's good, okay? You just got out of jail. What's the first thing you do? You're a 16 year old Marine. Obviously, we're going to go steal a bunch of booze and get hammered. What a stupid son of a bitch. So Jack and his buddies just- Not really, that's the thing. That's why 17 was the limit and it's Marines. Like Marines are Marines. I don't know what more to say. So they knew like the level of crazy shit Marines can get into. So they're like, okay, 17. That's why the 17 cap, right? Because teenagers are always going to be stupid because they're teenager. That's, that's how it's supposed to be, right? So like a lot of thinking will be driven by hormones and hormone, hormonal changes. That's the thing. They're not stable around this time and it can drive a lot of thoughts. So really bad decision can be made there. Decide they're going to go, they're going to get 15 jerry cans and they're going to sneak into the harbor at night onto a naval vessel and fill them with all the booze from the naval vessel's reserves. Okay, it goes great. They get away with it. They get 15 jerry cans full of beer and they bring it back to the company and everybody starts drinking. They have a great time. After a couple hours, all the booze is gone. Jack and his two buddies, it's okay, we'll go get more. They grab the empty jerry cans, they throw them in the car, they hop in the car, they drive back to the same exact ship. They, they literally return to the scene of the crime and they end up crashing the car along the way. So the other two buddies, they bail out, but Jack was sitting in the middle seat, so he didn't have time to jump out. He ends up getting tackled by the MPs and they got him. Jack, being the homie that he is, refuses to rat on anyone, gets 45 days of breaking rocks awaiting his court date, has his court date, gets sentenced, 30 days, bread and water, again. I could honestly eat it for every meal, or just eat it all the time without even stopping. <laughs> bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? So he does his time, he gets out, and when he gets out, something's something's different. There's hundreds of ships now, okay? There's a ton of Navy dudes, way more Marines. All the ships are sending Higgin boats ashore to let all their guys go on leave, get supplies, and so on. And he figures there's hundreds of ships out there. One of them has to have my cousin, Sam Lucas, on it, right? So he decides that he's going to hop in one of these Higgins boats and ride out to one of the ships and start asking around, see if he can maybe figure out where his cousin's at. So that's what he does. He just hops onto one. Okay, I'm... I 
okay again this is like from today's lens modern lens but nowadays first of all we're bounded by a law a lot right so we don't think of anything beyond that because you get in trouble there's civilian life right and certain thing that you do you're supposed to do like grow up go to school go to college get a job and all that shit it's it's certain layered thing right what you can do based on law and all that this guy's back then right like basically playing video game right now right like even in the military like having this kind of a free will oh, i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this you think that would not be the case in military because you get told what you do and that's what everybody does but people like this basically don't listen to that shit like get in trouble all the time figure out shit like okay where's the board where i'm supposed to like first of all how is he getting all this information like, is he like asking around isn't that raising flags and things like why why are you trying to get the information of which boat is what who's on what boat right he's actually this is like video game level shit it's like witcher right investigating shit and trying to do something i'm gonna get to that boat that's my mission now this is some insane level shit man because really think about it like real life you, you're that basically some equivalent to that in today's world like would you do all those things like that's some insane thing like okay i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna figure this out like your brain when you think about that you don't care about if you get trouble like whatever or worse type of shit you like you set on goal is this really surprising someone like that can achieve a lot of shit like this come on one of these higgins boats gets ferried out to a naval vessel nobody's really asking questions or verifying anything they're going back and forth all day long it's really not that big of a deal so he gets onto this u.s naval ship it's the uss duel he gets up starts asking around like hey does anybody know my cousin his name's sam lucas and holy shit the very first ship out of a couple hundred is the same exact ship that his cousin's on not only that but his cousin is on board right now and he's in the infirmary because he's getting stitches because somebody smashed him in the face with a beer bottle in a bar fight apparently it runs in the family so he goes he meets up with his cousin they're having a little reunion they're hanging out and the time comes he should probably you know hop back on a higgins boat and make his way back to the base he's on leave but obviously he can't sleep on the ship he doesn't have a bed here at which point his cousin sammy is like hey most of us are just sleeping on the deck of the ship anyways partying nobody wants to be like you know down in the dungeon where the cots are it's so nice outside we're just sleeping out in the open you could sleep here too and he's like okay perfect so he just stays the night there then while they're hanging out that night sam explains to him that they're gearing up for some big huge island invasion a massive battle that all these ships are going to be going to at which point jack is like fuck it i'm staying here i'm gonna stow away on the ship nobody's gonna notice because like all this shit i've said applies to more of a badass guy but this guy's especially like that like fuck it i'm just gonna decide to stay stay here and go on this mission yeah I i'm the protagonist now i decided that's that's what he's doing there i'm the protagonist now and this mission is just me like i'm gonna kick ass which basically i'm sure he's gonna do and this is some insane shit i love this you know what i'm gonna stop here it's like two part video like it's an hour long i have to do it like that and i have to go around so yeah i'll do the second part soon i guess i'm hoping this time yeah soon definitely soon right not like last time but okay, yeah because this is like like fighters and said it's like the most badass of them all right crazy as yet because he used the word est there so yeah all right well if you like my channel don't forget to subscribe and yeah i'll see you next time